I'm Dick Ellis, Beach Street City, Georgia. This is a 1957 Chevy, a, uh, a cheaper model, it's a, one, a 210. Back in 1971, all I had was a 64 Rambler that I bought new, and uh, my wife had to drive me to work, so we said, well, you gotta have a second car. So I checked the Atlanta paper, sure enough, there's an ad for a 1957 out by Stone Mountain. So I drove out there and looked at this car, I said, wow, it's like brand new. It only had 7,500 miles on it. And so I bought it and was gonna use it as a second car, but then decided maybe it's too good of a condition to just drive it as a second car. So I ended up storing this one and getting another car for a second. And since I've had it, since 1971, I've put a few thousand miles on it. So it's up to 12,800 miles at this time. The car is all original, original paint, original tires, original interior. The guy who sold it to me had bought it from the estate of an old woman who passed away. And I don't think the car has ever been outside of Atlanta, Georgia, that low mileage. I still have the cardboard plate that goes on it. It's bought at an LA Chevrolet in Atlanta. Been storing it most of the time. As you can see, I haven't driven it a lot, but uh, it's a fun car to drive. Again, it's all original paint. Original tires, interior. Uh, I keep it. I keep cars original. How often do you come across a classic car of over 60 years old with less than 13,000 original miles, and not just any car, but the iconic '57 Chevy? When we heard about this Chevrolet 210 being for sale by its third owner, we knew we had to make a classic car report about it for LCR. The car was sold new by Nally Chevrolet in Atlanta which, by the way, is still in business, albeit at a different location. The cardboard dealer plate from 1957 is still with the car, as well as this 57 map of Georgia. And that also came with the car. This 57 four-door sedan is almost entirely original. It proudly wears its original black paint. The cloth upholstery is original, and the car is standing on the original white wall tires from 1957. They don't build them like they used to definitely applies to the 64-year-old tires that don't even show any cracks. The 1957 Chevrolet is one of the icons of the golden age in the USA. Tail fins, rocket-like details inspired by the start of the space age, the iconic curved glass, royal amounts of chrome, everything is there to make it a symbol of the 50s. The design process was led by Chevrolet's chief designer, Claire McKeichen, and is one of the most recognized classic car designs today. The car has a body-on-frame construction, with the body being built by GM's prestigious in-house Fisher coach building division. This 210 is equipped with the 235 cubic inch inline six, rated at 123 horsepower. It is paired to a three-speed manual transmission, which has the shifter on the steering column. as if it were brand new. Now look at the key. You can lose your key while your car is running. Uh, that's a feature. This model doesn't have power steering, which despite the large steering wheel is something dearly missing in the 3,221 pound car. Uh, you didn't have any power steering, so you can see how large the wheel is and you needed that because this is a pretty heavy car and turning this around gave you some more leverage. Uh, also, <laughs> No power disc brakes here either. The car is stopped by manual drums on all four wheels. What it does have, however, is the original tube radio. Still operational in 2021, the radio outputs surprisingly good sound quality through a small grill in the top of the steel dashboard. News, weather, traffic, 95.5 WSB, Atlanta's news and talk. Especially when you extend the antenna that's almost longer than the car itself. So it has to heat up because it has tubes. Future, you know what those are, James? Tubes? So you stupid transistor generation. Talking about materials, do you see all those plastic parts? Me neither. Cars like these is where the term American Iron came from. Thick, heavy steel. Want to hear a real door? Bam! Now that's some door. Every surface on the inside is made of metal. No cracks ever in this steel dash. The blinker stock feels more solid than your entire Toyota. Door handles, window winders, nothing is made of plastic. So this is all metal. Look at this, this whole thing. 
That's why it doesn't break. So this is all aluminum. And then this is a frameless mirror. It's beautiful. It's very elegant. And look at these woven fabric weather strips. And all of it is original to the car. Like the vacuum wiper system and even the fabric seat upholstery with the funky 50s pattern. In 1970, the first owner put these seat covers on. So this is the original uh, seat upholstery, which has been perfectly preserved. So how are the creature comforts in this mid-level sedan from the 50s? The front bench is adjustable and gives a surprisingly good amount of room. So despite being six foot eight, I fit really well in this 1950s car. As you can see, it's a good seating position. Uh, what was even more amazing is the back seat. I still have room to sit behind myself. And you have your really wide panoramic view with the curved glass. It's pretty nice. Wonder though what it'll cost to replace if this breaks in 2021. Seating is pretty comfortable. It's pretty plush. I think there's, there's spring-loaded bench seats. It's pretty nice. Uh, look at this beautiful curve here, by the way. And then it has the, uh, the roll-down windows. Nothing is powered here, by the way. No power locks either. Uh, you have to lock each door individually. The Chevy has heat and air through a unit under the dash. For natural air, it has these nice lockable so-called cigar vent windows that for some reason have completely disappeared from modern cars. As said before, all windows in this car are manually operated. So this is how you open the door, it goes up. The high beams are controlled with your left foot, which is interesting as this car is not an automatic. The Chevy logo behind the steering wheel lights up when you turn them on. And yes, there are the 12,854 original miles on the odometer. On the inside, it has a dome light that turns on when you open any of the doors, and it even has a lighted glove box with cup holders inside the door. It furthermore features this beautiful Art Deco clock. Oh no, I ran out of gas, and that's a problem because where's my gas cap? Well, big surprise is right here. The black exterior paint is beautifully accented with subtle black painted accents on the hubcaps and chrome exterior trim. And look how nice the thin bezels on the mirrors are. Compare that to the big bulky plastic mirrors of today. It is just incredible to see how this 50 Chevrolet combines function with great design. The iconic curved windshield and rear window for example provide perfect visibility without having a thick A-pillar right in your face. And the designers managed to also make it look beautiful. It shows how much room for innovation there was in the 50s before the government started deciding everything. Talking about practicality, look at this nice big trunk. It has the original rubber liner, which also makes a lot more sense than today's carpeted trunks where everything slides all over the place. Anyway, how do we get home now? Okay, I'm gonna look up your house, James. Oh wait, it's not there yet. <laughs> I wonder if the tube radio is upgradable with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay? We want to thank Dick Alice for giving us the opportunity to review this unique classic and want to remind you that the car is for sale. If you're interested, drop us a line in the comments. Thank you for watching Luxury Car Report. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so to never miss our next review.